Thank you so much for being with us today on this fine Tuesday morning. Asante San, and of course, my name is Ram Aguko. It's a pleasure being with you on this fine Tuesday morning. And you're just in time for the next conversation of the day. If you're just joining us, it's all about matters concerning health. And uh, this morning, let's talk about managing cerebral palsy. What is cerebral palsy? In this discussion, if you have any uh, questions in regards to this particular issue, uh, feel free to be part of it. Because joining me in studio is an expert. This is none other than Dr. Mahindra Singh. He is a consultant, spine and brain surgeon at the Nairobi NeuroCare Limited. Welcome, uh, Dr. Mahindra. Thank you so much how are you feeling for having me this morning. Yeah, how are you feeling today? It's very nice. <laughs> Thank you for making that. Very time. nice to take out a topic like cerebral palsy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a topic that uh, healthcare is still finding its way to creep in, yeah. treat more of it. Mm -hmm. And a uh, lot of practicing doctors are not taking to it. And, and so, many people do not understand you know, how yes. to manage uh, yes. patients uh, exactly. who are suffering from exactly. this. But let's start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, for somebody who doesn't understand what we are talking about, mm -hmm. what is uh, cerebral palsy? So cerebral palsy, at, as it explains itself, palsy is basically paralysis. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a lot of it comes from, you know, some or the whole part of the body or one half of the body can be paralyzed. It usually happens because of the problems during pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Maybe there was a brain damage during the process of the birth. Okay, when the mm -hmm. child is taking birth, it's one of the most difficult journey that one embarks mm -hmm. in his lifetime. And um, cerebral palsy is when, you know, sometimes when the baby is trying to come out, the liquid of the mother's like amniotic fluid it goes inside, mm -hmm. okay or it took so much time for the baby to come out or the failure of the cry, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, then even once there was a normal birth, mm. the baby didn't cry enough, okay? So the lungs didn't expand, the lungs didn't expand, so oxygen didn't go into the brain. Mm -hmm. So first few minutes are extremely critical. So I, if even that happened well, mm -hmm. then the children sometimes have got a very high jaundice in first few days of life, yeah, yeah, that yeah. can also cause brain damage. But primarily, it's a huge brain damage mm -hmm. inside the, uh, you know, so brain cells, which the the, the outermost layer called cortex, mm -hmm. which is responsible for the general intelligence of human beings, mm -hmm. that gets damaged because of this faulty process. Because of this faulty process, yeah, especially during childbirth. During the childbirth, because what happens? Mm -hmm. Inside the baby was in bag of waters. The it's called amniotic fluid. fluid yeah. Mm -hmm. So baby is aquatic at that time. The lungs are totally collapsed, and the baby is feeding through the nutrition coming from the umbilical cord from mother to the baby. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now what happens? As soon as the bag of water is ruptured and baby comes out, that's when the lungs need to collapse, and that's why God has given a mechanism of this sudden crying, crying. and it's yeah. like parachute opening. Yes. So it has yes. to open suddenly it and fully. As yeah. soon as the, yeah. the baby is out. So the baby's cry is one of the most important thing to happen. Now, you, you know, um, Dr. Singh, when Africans, some Africans, mm -hmm. um, see cases like this, there's always this assumption of uh, uh, curses. <laughs> Uh, there mm -hmm. are these myths and misconceptions that yeah, maybe yeah. you did something wrong. Yeah. Maybe uh, uh, there's a problem with your family or with your lineage. That yeah. is not the case. Yeah. So, um, not knowing is a status of darkness, right? Yes. So, knowledge puts a light on some subject. Things become easier for you to understand. Mechanisms become clearer. And now is a point when, you know, you can reason things out, mm -hmm. right? So when we see very ancient scriptures in the caves, okay, mm. we started worshipping sun and water and yeah. because there were times when there were extreme suns. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, that kind of human mind which was still trying to understand nature thought that the sun god is angry on you, that's why it's getting it's, so it's heated. It's getting hotter. Right. Yeah. 
and uh, when water suddenly came like floods, <laughs> then they said, water, water bodies, bodies. Yeah, so let's <laughs> please them. Mm -hmm. That's what we used to understand yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and uh, I've heard that when Columbus went to United States, there were aborigines there, so they were not giving him access to the land. And because he knew that after some times, the lunar eclipse is going to come. So he said that, you know, my God is so powerful, mm -hmm. it will overpower your gods, because if you don't do it, in next few days, this moon will disappear for mm -hmm. a while, okay. and then you will get the diseases. Mm -hmm. And then they just waited, okay? And <laughs> then moon just went into the eclipse phase. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then they thought, this guy that, really... That he must have been a very yeah, powerful yeah, yeah. man. So then they gave him access. So mm. that sort is the power of knowledge. Wow, Le wow. So <laughs> starting from there, mm -hmm. um, if we don't know things, then we start attributing them to something else, some power that we have not seen. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that even with diseases like Parkinson's disease or movement disorders, in a very, very rich family here in Kenya, where the, the lady was in a software business, and she was having this problem of a severe Parkinson's disease, but the mother is thinking that, no, this is some black magic. Yeah. So, so she doesn't want her to go to doctors, mm -hmm. but when she's going to doctors, then she's angry because she wants some, you know, people from the tribes to come and do Heal some, some healing, of yeah, some healing process. Mm -hmm. So that was the thing, but actually, now we know the mechanisms that brain actually is something that requires a very high concentration of oxygen per yeah, minute, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. The highest. Especially at, uh, after childbirth. Yes, so what happens in first one and a half to two and a half years, the brain grows to its maximum capacity. And in a neonate, we call neonate when they're just taking birth, immediately after that. Mm -hmm. So these neonates, their brains are still regenerating a lot. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, they require constant supply of oxygen, and because there is a failure of collapse, uh, the opening of the the collapsed lungs, they don't get enough oxygen that they needed, mm -hmm. and then there is a damage, just like a stroke happens later. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So these kids, you would see that they they can express. Okay, but mostly it's the mother who can understand. So, doctor. I'm, I'm trying to understand. So, does cerebral palsy um, have stages of development? Yeah. And at what point can a mother or a parent know that, you know, my child could be having uh, cerebral palsy? Do we have signs and s symptoms? Yeah, so, um, first of all, cerebral palsy is a, is a development, developing disorder. Mm -hmm. It keeps on developing. With, with, with yeah, so, for example, you're driving. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe in a race, okay, okay, and your car has some problem, right? Mm -hmm. And now the other cars start going past you, mm. right? Yeah, right. So first, the faster cars say you were one among the first ones. Yeah. First, the faster cars are going beyond you. Mm -hmm. Then even the slower cars are going beyond you, okay. As yeah. the race progresses, because now your car is getting slower. more and more slower mm -hmm. with time. Uh -huh. So there's a there is a comparison with respect to the stage of life and the stage of your body's development. Is that so that's how the brain works also? That's how cerebral palsy emerges with time. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So what we are seeing now, we will see more of it as the time passes by. So if you see a spastic kid now, we will be seeing more spastic kid five years later because the muscles are getting stronger. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Now there are different types of cerebral palsy, different grades of cerebral palsy. So we'll not go into scientific details of it, but mm -hmm. there are mild, yes, yes. moderate, and severe, as most of the diseases are classified. So mild cerebral palsy is when you know a child is appearing quite normal to begin with, because mostly what happens when the child is there, uh, suckling of breast is one thing, crying smiling, even smiling comes a little later, which we call a social smile. So gradually when the milestones are, are leaving behind, they are not coming, mm. that's when even the doctors can say that there is an onset of cerebral palsy. Mm. But doctors, at least they can have 
uh, a high index of suspicion if the child didn't cry well okay mm -hmm. if the child cried well but sometimes even it happens later on because there are there are infantile infarcts as well strokes okay mm -hmm. so um, that's very important that you know regular visits to pediatrician is important because sometimes it is so mild that initially a baby is doing just basic things yeah yeah they just taking the feed mm -hmm. just poo poo and susu and those things mm -hmm. so these are very basic functions and gradually then the baby starts evolving so that failure of evolution which we call is the milestones the developing milestones mm -hmm. which pediat pediatricians very well know okay mm -hmm. some of our hospitals have got very well developed cdc or the center for uh, developmental uh, pediatric yeah. uh, the center for development so what they do is the developmental uh, pediatrics is something that monitors the the child as it's developing from a neonat to infant mm -hmm. to a child mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so there are different stages there are neurological milestones that at uh, certain months the baby should start smiling mm -hmm. the baby should identify the parent first mm -hmm. the mother then the father mm -hmm. then other family members mm -hmm. then they start um, touching things mm -hmm. they start enjoying things following the objects okay yeah. then they, yeah. there's a motor development they start crawling first they start turning in the bed then they start crawling then they uh, they start standing so everything has got a certain respective time but now and with the, them there is a delay there is a delay with and it. sometimes it can be so severe there is no development at all at all yeah but but, but for parents they may not be able to notice such things yes uh, do you feel like most parents uh, rarely notice uh, these signs until it's too late well uh, even if it's late in cerebral palsy mm. there is nothing magical that can be done if it was diagnosed earlier oh yeah. once it's there yeah because there. it is damaged already the brain is damaged nothing period. can be done so now most we can do is managing the cerebral palsy problems okay okay, okay. when i came here uh, and then i also realized even in india there are very few surgeons who are likely to undertake this responsibility mm -hmm. and probably i understand when i get more and more deeper into this that it's kind of depressing for a doctor if they are not able to do anything like if you are given a task mm -hmm. in which there is a very few uh, success rate it then it can be depressing yeah it can be depressing yeah for me particularly mm -hmm. um when i started seeing the parents is when i more frustration comes to me yeah. because it requires extreme patience to be with that child because when a child is coming it is it's a huge bunch of expectation is coming with yeah yeah and, and mother is thinking a bundle of joy yeah so but the first thing is happiness and the moment you know that now that my child is something that has got a serious issues with development with intelligence with so many things mm. that whole you know the dream thing that collapses and now they have to go at another level to to be to accept that mm. and uh, surprisingly here not so much in 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 india because that's where i practiced more than 20 years mm -hmm. and i started coming here since 2017 i saw that in a single healthy family mm -hmm. i had 3 to 4 cerebral palsy kids and it requires extreme dedication even to look after one single child so i i are you saying it's, it does nothing to do with the belief that it can be genetically transferred that is all about no no it's not genetic nothing about no, the no. bloodlines or no no in genetics. fact i had a lady uh, i saw very surprising very encouraging story that there was a lady in in india i met her when she was 60 plus and she had a, she had a mild cerebral palsy she got married mm -hmm. she gave a child birth to a to a healthy child who was a very successful engineer wow okay oh. and uh, then she had very tight legs 
right? Mm -hmm. So she was not able to stand for a very long time. But it's because of the cerebral palsy. Yes. Okay. So cerebral palsy. I'll I'll come to that. That what are few expressions of cerebral palsy? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this woman during childbirth, when she was carrying the child, mm -hmm. she was she was uh, she had to work because the way the conservative families are, mm -hmm. they uh, the daughter-in-law has to work. Yeah. She has to carry out all the duties. Mm -hmm. Then she is not allowed to sit down in front of the seniors. So she did all of that. Only in the later part, the spasticity kept on increasing, the tightness in the muscle kept on increasing. Ah, so yeah. much so that her legs were now going, they, they were, like they were the getting spread. Legged. They were spreading because the outside muscles of the thigh mm. were more tighter than the inside muscles. Okay. And so now in the later part of this life, I mean the last part of his life, in her 60s, she is now crawling. Wow. Okay. That's what was happening to her. So, as I'm saying that it keeps on growing because the muscles keep on growing, the strength mm -hmm. keeps on growing, so the expression will become different. Different. And, and, and before we get to the expressions, mm -hmm. just on the same, same um, discussion that we are having in terms of detection, you're saying um, once it's there, it's there. It's and the there. only thing you can do is to manage it. So, yes. um, a parent or somebody should not say that there's a particular age where it can be manifested. Yes. Is that so? There's no particular age. There's no particular age. It all age. depends upon severity. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then, there is a huge split between the, the physical abilities of a child mm -hmm. and the mental ability. So different. They're different. Okay? I have seen a very severely spastic child and I'll come to what spasticity, who was topper in the class mm -hmm. and topper in the state, mm -hmm. okay? Whole of the county, he was the topper. But the only thing is he had his own way of expressing because the muscles are so tight, which we call them spastic, mm -hmm. that he is not able to express, okay? So he had to be tied in the chair, okay? okay? okay. Otherwise, you know, he used to, everything was very tight. Even the speech becomes tight because all the muscles, they lose fine control which comes from the brain. Mm -hmm. So now I'll come to why there are certain expressions yeah, yeah, of really. cerebral palsy. Yeah, let's talk about the expressions. Yeah. yeah. So uh -huh. the way nature made us so-called superior than the animal kingdom mm -hmm. is that we have an extra layer of grey matter. Okay. In the brain. In the brain. Yes. Yeah. So. Basically, in, in others, it's more like gray matter inside and a white matter outside. So, mm -hmm. gray matter is something from where the function originates, okay? Mm -hmm. And it goes to the muscles, to the glands, okay? Because we have got a sensory system, a motor system, a secretory system, all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so, animals are more like, you know, without thinking they're doing their things. Yeah. They can be only trained in a certain pattern, mm -hmm. okay? But... Uh, in us, there is a there is a huge level of consciousness. There is another level of evolution, okay? Yeah, yeah. And this is because there is an extra gray layer. Yeah. This gray layer lets us think, rethink, redevelop, okay? Uh -huh. And redo things. So we can do one thing at one point of time, and then we think, okay, this is not working. Mm -hmm. Then we sit, we think, what was wrong? Mm -hmm. What could be done? And, 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 and then and, we come with another way, and uh, then okay. we can succeed. That's how human beings could could uh, evolve. So, um, just on the same matter, <laughs> um, just from out of my head, I did not plan to ask this, but now that you've mentioned it, is that what can distinguish between somebody who is uh, having a high Q, <laughs> a very high IQ mm -hmm. from the rest, um, the critical thinkers <laughs> from the non-critical thinkers, the, th those with the uh, high uh, uh, EQ as opposed to those who have uh, low yeah, EQ? Yeah, I'm more on the EQ side. I, I usually detest IQ, concept of IQ. That you, you means you are, yes. Okay. I do it. Yeah. And I'll tell you why with my own example. Yeah. Is that IQ is something you are telling someone as a product mm -hmm. that this person comes with this level of intelligence, <laughs> yeah. that's so not so true. Ah. Okay. Um, it all depends upon your conditions, your level of aspirations. Okay. Sometimes you suddenly get a smack out of some insult and mm -hmm. then you do things yes. which are so, you know, superhuman. Mm -hmm. So how can you 
say that this person is with this IQ, meaning you are always, um, you are always trying to um, fix the output of a person in a certain way, mm -hmm. which can be only intellectual. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. like Mr. Kipchoge, who is considered a inhuman or a superhuman, <laughs> superhuman, yeah. yeah, yeah, superhuman kind of a guy who yeah. who is running, but does this IQ say that you know this guy is going to be a super runner? Yeah, does it? That does it? Uh, it it doesn't. doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, huh. when um, I was a student, and most of the kids, they so don't want to go to the school. Mm. Okay. And, but there are some who want to go to school. So it all depends upon someone would like to be disciplined very early in life, someone cannot be. Mm. But if you see most of the successful businessmen in the world, they had left the universities. So <laughs> I mean, so that's why I say IQ is not great. It's not, yeah, and it's EQ is something which should be, you know, because EQ is a basis of why for everything in life. Yes. Why you want to do it. The emotions. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so if someone is poor, he wants to be rich for a middle class education is the best tool to get from point A to point B where we consider B is higher. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so for them it's more important. Right, so mm -hmm. EQ is something which is more important but this is the brain because that's consciousness. Okay, mm -hmm. and I've seen when sometimes I've seen patients coming to me in my practice they live in up country, older people, mm. and there is a young boy who is rich, smart, who is here. Mm. But you see more wisdom in the guy who is living with low education in up country. Mm. So, so someone may, may even argue um, uh, about how clever uh, <laughs> a person can be. Uh, for somebody who, who failed and uh, did not succeed in uh, academics, who is a father, because will will, will yeah. they pass on the, those traits to their son and will they also have yeah, failures? Yeah. So those are false blueprints that we give to our children, mm. okay? And uh, which should never be done because th there is so much of recombination happening with the genetic material of parents and a new baby is coming, you know, I mean, you may have siblings mm -hmm. and they all may be different in different capabilities. Some can be fantastic cook, yeah. some can be fantastic in mathematics. Mm -hmm. yeah, the only thing is that you need to encourage them that you can be great in everything. Every brain yeah. develops in its own unique way. Exactly. Everybody. So, all right, let's go and, back to the uh, expression. If we go back to cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. the most uh, beautiful thing that I find yes. is that particularly mothers, because I think mothers are the highest being on this planet. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Probably Me too. everyone, because, yeah. you know, mother is something divine. So they are able to understand mm -hmm. their children, their needs, their intelligence, everything, even when the child is not able to speak or that. For yeah. us, mm -hmm. that child may be expressing in a very, very... Um, incoherent way, it's something that you can't even understand and many of them, mm. they can just within f a look of few seconds they would say, this child is retarded, okay? Mm -hmm. Many do this, I mean, and then if these kids go to normal schools and I don't know how it happens, but children also have their own level of cruelty. If you go to school, <laughs> they only realize that, you know, we say children are so innocent, but you leave children among themselves, they yeah. become cruel to each other. Yes. They are pushing each other, they are... Uh, I, got a, I got a girl who got some abnormal movements because of extreme stress at the home. Mm -hmm. and, and she's like shaking. And then uh, this was a COVID time. Okay. And children oh. are asking her, hmm. is this COVID? Are you going to die? If you're going to die, wow. don't sit next to me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, someone having a, a bad family life is also getting a, a bad life in the school. So, <clears throat> but those mothers are able to see through all those um, disabilities of expression. They are mm. able to understand and I have seen whatever they are speaking, okay, in whatever way they can, mm -hmm. they make sense of it. And actually they can make, in their minds, they make complete sentences. Now, um, so. I'm, I'm looking at managing it, How, just a few tips. 
uh, to a parent watching you today? So, uh, before I do that, mm. cerebral palsy comes with broadly two subsets of spast of of uh, cerebral palsy. Yeah, one is flaccid or floppy child. Mm -hmm. okay. All the muscles are very loose; they're not able to sit. Anything you do, they just fall. They just fold into themselves. It's not That's a problem. That's a flaccid with the paralysis. No, it's all because of the muscles. So, so as, I, like as I was saying, backbone. that all this cortical layer that we have, that extra layer, yeah. which gives consciousness, is also the one which is giving us extreme uh, <coughs> muscle control. Okay. Okay. Mm. So, from here, the muscle fibers they descend down through the spinal cord, and then they express into the body through this through the spinal nerves. They finally go to the muscles, and muscles behave the way we want, like I am shaking my hand mm -hmm. uh, for expression. So, all of this comes from a very complex nervous system, but one of them is a motor system. So, there is a specific area in brain which is originating all these motor activities. Yeah. So, there are pre-motor areas which plan it, mm -hmm. and then there is a motor area which executes it. Mm. But when this motor area is sending the signals down with the fibers, it's also sending a signal for fine control. So, our muscles have got a certain tone. Tone is something which is, we are not too tight, we are not too loose. If we are yeah. too loose, we, we become floppy, we can't stand. If we are too tight, we become spastic. So, in cerebral palsy, this balance is either this side or that side. Okay. So, yeah. if it is, yeah? yeah if it is important. too loose, then mm -hmm. the baby becomes floppy. Mm -hmm. If it is too tight, the muscles become so tight that even the joints start coming out of, I have seen hip joints coming out of the, you know, wow. this, this femur, the thigh bone comes out of the joint and it's lying under the skin because the muscles are so tight. Th that was a, sound, looks like it's a extremely very painful, painful and the problem with these kids is that they are not even able to express that they are in pain because, because of extreme sudden, you know, and then just like a tsunami in a water world, Mm. There is a tsunami of signals that keeps going in them. So, they, yeah. anyways, they come up with abnormal sounds, which is even if they are lying down mm -hmm. with no problem, the abnormal sounds, they keep coming because even the vocal cord is a muscle. Yes. So, yeah. So, yes. when they speak, there is sudden blast and then there is a, you know, so they are not able to even speak properly. Mm -hmm. So, now we don't know when they are in pain and they are not in pain. Except that the mother who knows that, you know, my child is in pain. Okay. It becomes very difficult for these because the joints are coming out, the muscles are constant state of tightness. So, spastic kids are the ones where we can offer good treatment, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, then we see whether the child has got a good intelligence or not. The ability to comprehend mm -hmm. is what we would like to see because we may have spastic kids, both of them have got very tight muscles, okay. And we know that there is a there is a huge there is a circuit, there is a nervous circuit which goes from brain to muscle. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a sensory and a motor circuit. So we know that how a spasticity is produced and how we can break it, mm -hmm. just like an electrical circuit. Yeah. But if even if we do that, mm -hmm. then the child should be able to take the commands of a physiotherapist or their parents mm -hmm. so that they can work in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, physio physiotherapy is very important. Yeah, so physiotherapy is important, mm -hmm. but what happened because the neurosurgeons um, were not taking enough interest, um, it entirely became a physiotherapist's job. <laughs> and, it and then they became possessive about their patients. So, yeah. in India it has happened that when I used to go to them, uh, it's like a muscle becomes a spring which is constantly getting a high tension signal from brain, okay. Yeah. You are not breaking that signal, but you are trying to stretch this brain which is contracting, mm -hmm. right? right? So, doing a physio is good, okay. It is a mainstay, mm -hmm. but with a, if you are not doing a neuromodulation, okay, yeah. means the way we are modulating the signal going from brain to muscle, you are not doing enough. Right. So, there is no point, you know, the, the, the kids are uh, stretched by a, a rope for a certain time or you are 
you are uh, putting them under a splint mm -hmm. when the brain is constantly firing on the muscle to contract. Mm -hmm. So unless you modulate that, the physiotherapy will not be very effective. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any other you know, management tips um, for parents? So the, the best thing is first to detect early so that we can plan things early. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. When I came, I came with a lot of enthusiasm. But I realize that sometimes what happens when you're saying that we treat cerebral palsy mm. and a general population cannot understand the difference between treatment, management and cure. Sure. Okay. <laughs> they would believe that, you know, once you do the surgery, my child will be cured and the intelligence will yeah. become good everything and everything. Okay. And then you say, no, setting up the expectation is one of the key areas yes. of s doing surgeries to cerebral palsy kids. Mm. So we became rather slow because I just entered into the Kenyan space and um, um, unless the parent understand and we are on the same page that we are doing, we are only changing the way the muscles are so that they can be better transported. Many times it is so good that sometimes it's only lower half is involved, not upper half is normal. The intelligence is normal, they are the best kids. We call them as grade two. So they have difficulty walking, they have got tight feet. so they are walking on their toes, okay. Mm -hmm. You partially cut their nerves which are going to muscle with excessive signals. Now the muscles are eased out, okay. And the way there is an organization of the muscles in the spinal cord, mm -hmm. an irritative segment is also irritating the upper and lower segment in the spinal cord. Mm -hmm. So say the calf muscle, okay, is very tight. It's also irritating the thigh muscle. It's also irritating the opposite muscle. Mm. Okay. So all of these, the coordination is not there. Yeah. Once you, once you reduce the signals of the calf muscle, now even other muscles start behaving well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when we operate these cases, we are always opening the nerve and then we are testing with electrical signals as to which has got the highest signal you cut them. So sometimes 60 percent, 70 percent, even 80 percent can be cut. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And, and uh, um, um, even, even as, as should we, we pause? Yeah. Um, just com comment on matters concerning uh, life. Your battery is gone. Yeah. Um, you can talk about life expect expectancy. Life expectancy can be very high in these kids. We have seen um, kids. Uh, even adult cerebral palsies we have seen. Mm. Mm. Even uh, we have seen that adults, even up to 25, 30 years of patients that I have seen. Okay. Mm -hmm. The earlier we are able to operate them, particularly the ones we who had good comprehension, then the better physiotherapy can do them. And even with time, they start moving better. They start. They can adjust themselves to life much better. So it's not that the life expectancy is affected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's um, again, as I would say, I am, my heart really goes to the parents who are looking after the cerebral palsy kids. Yeah. Because uh, many times with this happens that if there is a child like this, mm. the males flee from the family. <laughs> and the so females, many times. Yeah. Mm. And the females are left to take care because they are mothers. They never. Um, they never look back on their child, so they they stay. But the problem is that sometimes these kids are so severely affected, mm. they are not able to, despite being educated, they are not able to go and work. So I think uh, with the government we can sit and then we need to identify the needs of these mothers mm -hmm. who are educated, mm -hmm. who are capable, but they are forced unemployed. Wow, yeah, right? yeah. Because it needs money to treat them, right? It's very expensive. They are not so comprehensively covered by, by these schemes. Mm -hmm. So unless we understand the whole scenario of cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. I mean the family which is going through this, it affects everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, sometimes like a mother can have two normal kids and one cerebral palsy kid, but all the money is draining down because of the medicines, physio and everything. Yeah, yeah. Now you are not able to take care of those kids who could study. Mm -hmm. So it is something that has always haunted me that even if you offer them treatment, 
we are doing surgeries, but then when they come to a private sector, it always has a cost. A very sustain, high cost. Right? Mm -hmm. so, so, maybe we are still talking to some people in the government that if they can come with certain schemes for the cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. We actually tried to do a lot of surgeries on cerebral palsy in, in uh, January of 2020 when suddenly COVID came. Mm -hmm. I saw 250 patients with Lions Club in Nakuru and they were ready to help us. And mm -hmm. then uh, this didn't, didn't go through because lockdown happened between the counties. Yeah. 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 So, we are still hoping, you know, we have formulated certain steps with the Lions Club and uh, we are also looking for some other people who can come forward, mm -hmm. sponsor families for treatment. Mm -hmm. Then at least, you know, we can improve the transport of these kids even if they are very seriously spastic. Mm -hmm. And they are not even able to sit because they are totally straight. straight even yes. their legs are straight, hip joints are straight. Mm. So they are actually then there are special carriages for them to transport them straight. We can make them sit. Even that can be a big boon to the families who are suffering. Because now they can be adjusted into a chair. So they can be transported from one place to another. In, in one family we have seen that for 15 years a young parent never gone to a film because theater because they didn't want their spastic child to be at home and they are seeing movie yes so once mm. i released the spasticity that child was able to sit in a cinema theater for them that was a you know Samira, a blessed moment yeah, yeah. so <laughs> it, it's uh, sometimes very beautiful to treat cerebral palsy kids but it's it. emotionally very draining wow and I wonder how, how you manage to, you know, get around the disappointment that uh, always comes along with Yeah, so right now I take um, patients, I'm not operating them right, left and center. Mm. Because it's very important, you know, that for example, someone comes and they have money uh, or they have arranged something. And then if you operate and they came with an expectation that you know our child is going to be fine after yes. the surgery yeah. because this doctor is claiming so mm. and then I have I become extremely slow I say no you I go know. and think mm. this is what I am telling you this is what we are going to do it's a just a palliative care of mm. a child mm -hmm. yes there are certain kids who are very brilliant and um, but who, who just had difficulty walking those are the kids we promise that yes these kids are going to be very fine Wow, because the yeah. surgeries we are doing at the spinal cord or at the nerve level, sometimes we can discharge the patient in very next day. Mm. But uh, it's it's uh, important for them to understand that what exactly is being offered. Mm -hmm. And 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 just um, to mention, but uh, a few maybe uh, your call to action for uh, the government mm -hmm. and uh, any stakeholder that. Uh, might be interested in uh, dealing with this um, case of cases of cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. What would be your call to action? And maybe uh, if you have any recommendations that uh, you, uh, you, you can give today? Well, the recommendation would be at two levels. One is that we have NHIF here, mm -hmm. which can take care of it. Um, so health can be sponsored. We, because uh, like the, the surgeries that we do, are called a selective dorsal rhizotomy, yes. it's called a SDR mm. and then there is something called as a super selective nerectomies where we go down to the muscles, we explore the nerves into the muscles and we cut them. So these procedures need to be included in the, in, in the procedures which are covered by NHIF. Mm -hmm. And second thing is also to give a economic support to the families, particularly the mothers of the family. So, you know, if some thing they could be, they, they could be doing at their home yeah. while taking care of those kids is something that will give them a kind of employment. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen in India, because it's a short stay here, this is the third year. Mm -hmm. In India, we have a program for blinds, which has very beautifully penetrated down to the village levels, where if you are, you're, you're not able to see, they teach them the cane work, you know, the the chair making in which there is a special plastic fiber, they are able to weave on the chair, okay? 
so those chairs are made by blinds or there are certain um, jute work that the blinds are trained for mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. these blind people who could not be employed they can earn money by themselves yeah and then yeah. there are ngos mm -hmm. so they they take these products from the area of production to the market so these are the things that government can do here Mm -hmm. for the mothers of cerebral palsy kids. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and I have a question from, uh, this is uh, uh, Mercy. Mercy is asking a question here. Uh, what is the difference between cerebral palsy and Down syndrome? The Down syndrome is, uh, is a chromosomal thing. It's a genetic abnormality, mm -hmm. okay, which is not because of a faulty birth process. Yeah. Okay. Um, of course, I'm, I don't know much about why I could see four kids in a otherwise normal pregnancy in a normal family yes why four kids got affected with cerebral palsy that's a matter of study okay yeah and, and, and that's that i've seen only here genetic yeah so that i can say some genetic mm. because i asked with those mothers that was this birth process faulty with the child cried well everything was okay but then why four kids in the same family mm. got cerebral palsy so that's something too, but but otherwise the cerebral palsy mostly is secondary. I mean, it's after birth you got a stroke, something okay. happened. Mm -hmm. Even sometimes a head injury happens to a child, and then cerebral palsy happens because there was a after head injury there was a stroke in the brain, so a part got damaged. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Down syndrome is something which is chromosomal. It mm -hmm. comes with a certain set of problems. Okay, so there is a low mentation. The intelligence is low. There is a certain form of bone deformities which are there. Mm -hmm. The yeah. baby is not growing well. So yeah. even the spine, we say craniovertebral junction, mm -hmm. which is junction of the head and the spine. That's where the defects are. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. those things are there. But, but, but they are not connected in any way. Cerebral palsy no, no, and Down not. syndrome, they are not connected. Even there is one more thing which will, with uh, parents get confused is autism yes. and cerebral and palsy. Cerebral, yeah. so I was actually coming there. Yeah. Autism, uh -huh. yeah. Autism is a totally different thing. So babies are, are born with a different set of perceptions. For example, I've seen a kid mm -hmm. who had autism. Um, he is otherwise normal, but the moment you try to extend your affection to him, like say you want to touch him, mm -hmm. he suddenly becomes violent and hits you. Mm. Yeah. So then uh, I was talking to the parent, they said that he feels, because his perception is so altered, that when the hand is going towards him, he seems a huge hand is coming to me. Which is mm. so, and he gets fearful. And then he reacts this way. Wow. Okay, so okay. in autism, sometimes someone is just, you know, very, um, he becomes very fearful when he's in an enclosed space. Hmm. So I had an autistic child who, whenever he goes into a toilet, he starts breaking all the tubes or cables, <laughs> anything is coming out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I've also seen in autism, we have also seen a very high level of intelligence. Mm -hmm. Some of the autistic kids are extremely smart in mathematical capabilities or artistic. Mm -hmm. One of my friend's son, who was a next door neighbor, he had autism. But I saw him when he was just five or six years old. Mm -hmm. You just give him even a small picture of any car. Yes. Just, just a side light, okay? Yeah. Uh -huh. And he would even tell you the details of the engine that has and how many versions of engine that yeah. car has. Mm -hmm. So that child was autistic, but now he is studying medicine. <laughs> so, so autism mm -hmm. is a bit different. So it's different cerebral from cerebral palsy is a is a whole complex of plus minus abnormal mentation, definitely grossly mm -hmm. abnormal. Uh, muscles of the body particularly. Yeah. So the yeah. muscular expression is one which is main in cerebral palsy. Either wow. the kids are flaccid or spastic, mm. but it's the spastic which we can we can treat, we can modify them. To okay. um, let, let me just ask you this um, and before we wrap it up. When we started this conversation, you mentioned one very key issue. During childbirth, you mentioned issues to do with the amniotic fluid and, 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 and mm -hmm. the whole process mm -hmm. uh, uh, of, of, of uh, oxygen getting into the brain. 
and 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 you know the umbilical cord. You mentioned that quite a lot of things. Now, it made me wonder: Does the doctor have a key role to play when it comes to preventing cerebral palsy, especially during that process of child? Birth? Yes. So, I would say it's the primary health care, which is where most of the problems happen, because majority of people they live in maybe um, a distant a smaller districts smaller towns or villages yes so primary health care is very important because it's the delivery which is more important the mm -hmm. proper delivery of a kid is very important okay mm -hmm. so if they are taught well about cerebral palsy that what can happen if we are not doing our job well the doctors not only the doctors, like, mm -hmm. you know, we have medical officers. Yes. We can't, so in a developing nation, the periphery will always have less doctors. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, childbirth is not something which has started happening now yes. in the past 50 years or 100 years. Mm -hmm. It's happening for thousands of years. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, in, in animal world, it's natural. Okay. Mm -hmm. And most of the, the kids are healthy in nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Because Kenyan wildlife is anyway so heavily photographed, <laughs> we mm. can at least tell that, you know, the <laughs> yeah, yeah, majority yeah. or almost all the kids are coming out normal. So why mm. it's happening in humanity that we are getting this? Because now <clears throat> deliveries had been happening for thousands of years. Now we want to do it in hospitals. So there were always some women who were trained to look after the pregnancy or the delivery part of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. In India, it was there. So there mm. were some designated females who... Midwives. In, yeah, mm -hmm. midwives. Mm -hmm. So they were always there. We just need to give them this modern thing that, you know, what is happening? Mm -hmm. What's the importance of crying? Right. Mm -hmm. All of these things. Well, if the baby is not crying, sometimes you have to tickle, sometimes you have to pat them. Yeah. And yeah. they start crying. Mm -hmm. So that happens and they become normal because there is a certain standard time mm -hmm. in which the baby should cry. So our it's medical practitioners need to understand and, yeah, so, and get so, training in this so, area. So these are the these are the the midwives, the nurses in the peripheral hospitals, the medical officers. They should be trained for this. There should be task force mm -hmm. against cerebral palsy who should be constantly teaching them the harmful effects of cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. or and and what should they do? And they are very basic things. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't blame it to doctors mm -hmm. because most of the things are you know when they're happening they suddenly happen in the middle of the night maybe at 3 a.m 4 a.m so it's a doctor on duty or medical officer on duty or nurse on duty or a midwives mm. they are the basic force for these things okay okay yeah. uh dr singh i want us to bring this discussion to a close and give you time to have a final word a parting shot uh, mm -hmm. uh to uh, kenyans that are watching you uh, this fine morning uh, concerning cerebral palsy. Uh, that's your camera as we bring this to a close just within 30 seconds or so. Thank you so much for having me. I just want to say in uh, favor of cerebral palsy families that many of the things in cerebral palsy can be modified to make your life easier. Particularly this spasticity can be treated well. These children can be treated well after with physiotherapy. So just don't rely on physiotherapy. I have found that many parents when I say that you need to show us we need to map the child's spasticity. They say that, no, no, the therapy is already going on. But physiotherapy alone is not helpful because the tightness in the body is coming from the faulty nervous system and we need to break that electrical or neuroelectrical circuit. So once we break the circuit, the physiotherapy suddenly becomes very, very impressive, very fast, and the children can actually come to the flow of normal life. Thank you so much, Dr. Okay. Mahindra. You're doing a good job. I, I love the so. fact that you are also empathetic with your own patients. Yeah, it's more with, uh, uh, there was a initial five years. Yeah. I never charged a cerebral palsy family. You never? No, because <laughs> I had nothing to offer to them. I was still understanding. Keep, keep doing what you're doing. Because uh, when you are trained, the neurosurgeons are not focusing too much on mm. even in the training part of us. Yeah. The, yeah. We never get these patients for surgery. So when they were coming, mm. I mean, they had gone to several places. Even people who don't treat them, they claim to treat them mm. and then alternative therapies and everything. Yeah. So yeah. they have drained their money anyways. 
Okay, so when they come, their parents are empty faced. They are so tired with the world. So yeah, I didn't want to play with those emotions. So I said, okay, mm. until I started finding that yes, surgery can be done. Yeah. Okay. There is a hospital yeah. in US which is operating children in thousands. Yeah. So that's when I said, what are they doing? So they started closely. So only till 2017, huh. I operated my first case. Wow. And then I saw the results were so quick because you cut the nerves. Mm. The child is, is, is much better the very next week or, or the very next day. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it gave me a lot of satisfaction. Keep doing what you're doing, Dr. Thank Ari. you so much. And I wish you the best. And, uh, 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 you know, it's, it's encouraging to see um, you having such a heart. Thank you so, Thank you so much, much for coming today. Thank you. I appreciate your presence. Thank you so much. That is Dr. Mahindran Singh uh, today, ladies and gentlemen. And I, I hope you've learned something. I sure have. And uh, uh, that brings us to the end of this particular discussion on matters concerning managing cerebral palsy. But remember, don't go away. We still have more coming up. You're right here on Why in the Morning. My name is Ram Maguko. It has been a pleasure being with you. Let's stick around for more uh, coming up after this short break.